chainsaw man is a story about a man who's a chainsaw. Did I get that right? Chainsaw Man is possibly the hottest anticipated IP in anime right now. Recently, it doesn't seem like Shonen Jump can miss when it comes to their titles being guaranteed mega hits. Jujutsu Kaisen, the new kid on the block that everyone seems to talk about. Demon Slayer, only broke every sales record imaginable and completely revolutionized anime movie tie-ins forever. Spy X Family, I think more people in the anime community watched this than took showers, and yet even with that, it feels like there's just as much hype for Chainsaw Man even though it hasn't even started airing yet. 180,000 people were waiting in the lobby for the new trailer drop. The trailer numbers have got upwards of 17 million views on YouTube, which is pretty much unheard of for a new upcoming IP. I mean, these are the kinds of numbers Attack on Titan Final Season is getting, and that's Attack on Titan Final Season. And judging from these trailers alone, this might be one of the most beautiful things Studio Mappa have produced. I mean, oh, just look at this. It's beautiful. When this anime finally drops, it's pretty much set to take over the anime community and further cement Shonen Jump as the powerhouse of anime and manga. But, I'm not here to talk about Chainsaw Man. Wait, 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 hold on a second, hold on! I wanna wait till the anime starts airing before I tackle this behemoth of a story because I've said this a few times before, but I haven't actually read the Chainsaw Man manga yet. Why? I mean, just look at this. Wouldn't you want to experience this story for the first time via anime if it ends up looking this good? What I have done, though, is read pretty much everything else the author has done. Tatsuki Fujimoto is one of the hottest names in manga right now, and while Chainsaw Man is busy taking over the world, I wanted to take a chance to talk about some of his other works because after perusing, I fully believe that he might be one one of my new favorite manga artists of all time. Reading this guy's work and seeing his current path in manga, I honestly think we might be witnessing the journey of one of the greatest manga artists of our time. Yes, burn this name into your memory because this guy <laughs> could well possibly be the new face of manga. Everything he's touched without exception is, in my opinion, worth a read. So if you're looking for something to hold you over from that Chainsaw Man hype, this is the perfect place to look. Let's start with Fire Punch. But before we jump into Fire Punch, I wanted to talk about my friends over at Boksu, who are today's sponsor. Boksu is a monthly subscription service that delivers premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings straight from Japan to your door. Each Boksu features a new theme, providing a gourmet journey through Japan every month. And guys, right now, I'm not gonna lie, Japan is absolutely boiling in the summer heat. But on the bright side, I finally get to go to some summer festivals, which is this month's theme. That's right, you have a chance to have your own Matsuri festival this month, because if there's one thing you need to try out at summer festivals, it's the food and snacks, and Boksu has got you covered. They're here to curate that experience just for you. You can find out more about Matsuri Snacks in a helpful little booklet that comes with each Boksu along with the best tea pairings to have with it. Now one thing you've got to have at every Matsuri is of course takoyaki, and Boksu have given us some takoyaki snacks right here. Let's give this a taste, shall we? Oh, that smells like takoyaki, god damn. Oh, this actually tastes so much like takoyaki, what the hell? Oh. We also got ourselves a chocolate sand cookie. Let's have a taste of this one as well. Look at this. I know I'm going to like this already. Oh, that's a really refreshing snack. That's really good. So, if you want to start your summer festival episode today, click the link in the description and use code GIGUK15 for $15 off your first purchase. Thank you to Boxy for sponsoring me today. Back to Fire Punch. Fire Punch is a story about a man who punches things with fire. Fucking nailed it. It's the end of the world. The earth has frozen over into an ice age, plunging everyone into a never-ending winter that has pushed life to the edge. Plants won't grow, animals are dead, and humanity is on the brink of extinction. Thankfully, there have been some humans that have been blessed with superpowers and can perform feats of miracle, like our main character Agni, who's been blessed with the ability to regenerate. Under any other circumstance, this would be his opportunity to be a superhero, but in this barren wasteland, there's only one way his power can be useful as an infinite food source. Arm after arm, he painfully severs his limbs for his sister and village to feast upon so they don't starve to death, even though there's little reason for anyone to keep the will to survive and live on this kind of way. This is how Fire Punch opens up its world and introduces you to the story that you're about to experience. Because one day, after encountering another group of people who find out this village has resorted to cannibalism to survive, another blessed human takes it upon himself to cleanse the entire village with his own powers by burning everyone alive with a flame that cannot be extinguished until the subject is dead. Unfortunately for Agni, this means he's been set ablaze with a flame that will never stop burning him as he regenerates faster than his body can turn to ash. For one whole year, he could do nothing 
nothing but writhe around in pain, constantly burning to death but unable to ever die. Three years pass until he can slightly move around by chewing his tongue off to distract him from the pain. Five years before he learns to breathe with the pain of the flame searing his lungs upon every breath. And only after eight years of constantly burning is he fully able to adapt to the pain. And the first thing he does is he makes a fist engulfed in flames and goes, I'm gonna punch that motherfucker who did this to me. Yeah. How's that for an origin story? Oh, look at this man with the little spider bite. Was the little spider bite painful? Did it give you a poo-poo? Oh, that looks like a painful poo-poo. Oh, is the widow baby sad because his parents got shot and now he listens to my chemical romance? Widow baby, don't be sad. It's gonna be okay. Fuck that. How about having your friends and family burned alive in front of you only to have your entire existence be in constant searing pain of being scorched to death every moment of your life? Fire Punch takes a super-powered, superhuman story as you know and completely flips it on its head. It reshapes and reframes what you think having superpowers would be like by dropping you into one of the most brutal and unforgiving worlds I've seen in manga. You got electric powers? Fantastic! Give me a hammer so I can go around saving the world like Thor, right? Nah, actually, you know what? You can be really useful as a personal battery that people can use to power their homes. Firepower? Brilliant! We're going through an ice age right now, so heat's the one thing humans need. So let's just strap you down so you can become our personal industrial power plant. If you have powers, you're not just a human being, but a natural resource people need to expend in order to survive. And by God, are people going to survive by any means necessary? This is a world without hope, and Fire Punch uses this as a vehicle to dive right into the deep end to showcase some of the worst sides of humanity and the things people will turn to in times of desperation. We've seen stories like this before, but Fujimoto manages to present them in a way that feels fresh and new. It's a dark, deep, introspective story that somehow finds time to make some kick-ass action along the way as well. And even then, he finds his own way to do things. Like, I don't know why in basically every story I've seen with superpowers, there seems to be this unspoken agreement that no more than two people will have exactly the same power. And if two people in the world do meet with the same power, it's just like, oh, hey, you know, I'm like the token fire guy in the story, so I guess we've got to battle to the death and stuff, okay? Fire Punch says, fuck that. Let's have a full-on slaughter fest with a room full of wolverines who can regenerate and see who comes out on top. People here know what kind of powers exists and have adapted fighting styles that play to their strengths and weaknesses of the powers they go up against. To a regenerative, body parts can be a resource, a weapon to be used to give you an advantage. Agni gets impaled, fucking chops his own head off midair so he can regenerate faster and get back in the fight, chucks his arm at someone and sets them on fire. Somehow in this world gone mad, Fire Punch still feels like it's steeped in realism. This is how people would fight, act, and live if shit like this actually happened in the real world. This is a story of nihilism, in a desolate world with little reason to wake up and continue living, where can you even begin to find meaning in life? Was there even one to begin with? Is it possible to find hope in a place of hopelessness? It's also a story of a guy who's been set on fire and punches people. It gives you such a unique feeling reading it because there is one big distinguishing trait I found with Tatsuki Fujimoto's work. It's... It's fucking weird. Within chapter one, Agni's sister is like, Oni-chan, do you want to repopulate the world with me? And I was like, oh, fire punch. I didn't realize this was the kind of fire we were going to be starting with here. But, you know, luckily before she could light the flames of the incest dumpster fire, she just became one. Ayo! One of the characters has an entire arc where they want to make a movie and cast Agni as the main character, which is like... Okay, another person meets a village doctor and he seems like a swell guy. He wants to save all the children and the dogs. Must be a good guy if he cares for dogs and then out of nowhere he's just like, so... Wanna fuck my dogs? And that's like some of the more normal plot developments that happen. The second half of Fire Punch is a psychedelic acid trip that goes more off the rails the more pages you turn and I'm definitely gonna need another video to break this down because I need you guys to know. I can't be the only one to know what it feels like to be on Fujimoto's wild ride. If you think you know the direction this story's gonna take, you're wrong. Every time you think Agni's gonna take one step forward, he takes two steps left and levitates up. This is not the kind of series that will make any kind of sense in the traditional way, but if there's one one thing I will guarantee you, it's that it'll give you an experience like none that you've ever had before. And that's something I feel emanating out of all of this guy's works. He's someone that takes normal convention and drop kicks it out of the atmosphere. Someone who isn't afraid to throw in some bad shit and saying things into his work, even if he knows the general audience might not understand it. Fire Punch was a melting pot of raw ideas from a talent that had yet been refined. It is far from the perfect manga, but through the unhinged madness, I could tell that there was something special behind this vision. And I think Fujimoto learned a lot of lessons from this, because his future work would only grow to be more polished while maintaining his unique, insane style. Obviously, in Chainsaw Man, but also in his one shots, namely look back and goodbye Aerie.
Most manga one-shots you see are around 50-ish or so pages, acting like an extended manga chapter, and yet this guy somehow had the gore to do two very notable one-shots, one being 143 pages, and the other being 200 pages. That's not a one-shot, that's an entire fucking manga volume, which I believe in the mangaka world we refer to as absolutely fucking cracked. But it was in reading these two titles that changed my perception of Fujimoto from just being a talented manga artist to being an absolute genius. Both of these one-shots tell stories you may be very familiar with. Look Back follows the life story of two manga artists that become friends and Goodbye Eri is about dealing with the grief at the loss of a loved one. But they both take their own very weird turn with their own weird Fujimoto flair. That would take more time for me to describe than for you to just go ahead and read them, so please just go fucking do that. They're both available on the Shonen Jump app and I guarantee you're not going to find a better way to spend 30-ish minutes of your life. What I realized is that Fujimoto has such a unique style of storytelling that feels almost intimate in a way. The man has a grasp of manga in a way others could only dream and I think both these stories fully display what makes him so special. This is what it's like seeing a genius visual storyteller at work. He knows when to use dialogue and when to shut up and let his panels do the talking. Take this scene from Look Back. Fujino is just a kid who draws manga for fun. Her comics get published in the fourth grade newsletter and everyone praises her for it. She's talented, they say. She's the best there is, they say. There is no one that could be better than her. She is a manga genius. That is, until one day, another person her age publishes their art in exactly the same newsletter and completely blows hers out the water. Hers looks like an amateur scribble next to this mystery person and everyone around her makes her know it. So, unwilling to take the L, she practices. Day in, day out, she works to improve her art. Before she knows it, it's years later and she's looking at her new improved comic next to the same person who's also gotten drastically better in a way that she could never even hope to reach. Convinced there's no way she could ever compete, she gives up on manga. And so time passes and eventually she reaches graduation age. Her teacher asks to deliver a diploma that belongs to this mysterious rival that she never met. And after reluctantly going along with it, by complete chance, they meet. Turns out her rival was another girl that was a complete shut-in all this time that focused on nothing but art. She finds out that her rival was actually jealous of her and her storytelling skills and on top of that was even a fan. After asking for an autograph, the other girl, the rival, the person that in Fujino's mind she could never hope to compete with, calls her a manga genius. And then after saying goodbye, all you see her doing is walking away and you see this, 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 then you turn the page and It's rare to see such a mastery when it comes to visual storytelling. You can feel a wave of emotions shifting and turning in a way that's normally impossible to convey on a still page. Joy, excitement, validation, vindication. This didn't feel like I was reading a manga. It felt like I was watching a movie, not with rough storyboards, but with real actors conveying their subtle emotions. And that's the magic of his work. His art is able to portray such a range of emotions and impact. One panel could be a silly character making a dumb face and then the next could be a beautifully haunting existential nightmare. The kinds of panel with such striking imagery that it will be burned into your psyche for years, decades for your life to come. It's this ability to switch on and off at a whim that makes Fujimoto a master. We are just puppets on his stage with our emotions tethered to whatever he wants to express. And all this is on full display in Goodbye Airy, which is one of my favorite pieces of short fiction I've ever read. The manga focuses on a boy trying to come to terms with his mother passing away from cancer and he does this by making his own movie that he films with his own very weird and twisted personality. What makes this special isn't just the story that's told, but the way manga is used as a way to tell it. Almost every page in this manga is split into four panels, almost like there are frames from a movie itself, the movie being made in this story. Sometimes we are cutting to different scenes, sometimes it's a behind the scenes shot, and sometimes there are entire double page spreads of almost the exact same panel, just so we can see subtle movement and expression. Which means the few times a page breaks this paneling formula, it impacts you in a new way I've 
never really experienced It hits different, okay? I tried to find another way to say it. There isn't. It just hits fucking different, all right? The narrative takes you on a journey of what you perceive as real, reframing your perception as you continue reading. Right up until the end, it weaves in and out of some perfect blue-esque reality, and we're here to figure out whether we're watching a play or whether we're watching real life unfold. The fourth wall isn't broken. The fourth wall is removed entirely, and we as an audience are wondering if it ever existed in the first place. This isn't a manga. This is an indie film that's been playing inside of Fujimoto's mind and we've been lucky enough to get front row seats at its screening. Somehow, he's made cinematic manga a thing. This one shot packs more emotion in these 200 pages than most manga do in their entire run. There are twists, there are turns, there's that same Fujimoto weirdness that takes you to a place you'd never thought the story would go, but at the end of it all, there is a message, loud and clear, that culminates in a final panel that blew me away. This was, in the simplest of terms, a masterpiece. If it was a real screening, I would have stood up and given a standing ovation. And that's why I don't think I'm overstating it when I say Tatsuki Fujimoto could be one of the future goats of manga. It's rare that you see such a raw talent in any field, and we are just now witnessing the start of his journey. I'm very surprised Chainsaw Man blew up as much as it did. Telling me his work would be something that appeals to mainstream audiences would be about as surprising as telling me that David Lynch is directing the next MCU movie. But at the same time, I'm really glad that it did. Because behind all this craziness, behind all the weirdness, behind all the batch insane ideas, there is a raw desire for expression. You can feel Tatsuki Fujimoto's pure passion for storytelling bleeding out of every single panel he does. Some of it may be pretty out there, but through it, I sense a conviction like no other from someone who's so unwilling to compromise on his vision, even if it means having to stick the middle finger to popular convention. And all this sets the stage for the Chainsaw Man anime to drop, as the wider world can get a glimpse of the face of a new Manga juggernaut of our time. <laughs> hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. I am hype as hell for Chainsaw Man to come out as everyone else is, but I'm gonna wait until it starts airing before I consider making a video on it. But with that said, thank you very much to Alpha Sigma, Basil, Dysfunctional Degenerate, Elephal, Flabberwocky, Ivido, Jeff, Lavados, Pain Patchett, Pony Stark, Watergeist VT, and everyone else, my Patreon, for helping to support me for this month and making this video possible. Again, if you haven't heard, this might be old news now, but I am going on tour in North America in the month of October and late September. If you want to have a chance to see me and my fellow boys C Dog VA and Joey the Anime Man live, then go to trashtastetour.com to purchase your tickets. We are sold out in a bunch of cities right now, so please take this chance while you still have it. Anyway, though, that's it from me. Not many updates today. I've been Giguk, and I'll see you all next time.